What's up guys? This is Dynamic Programming for Beginners part 10 and today we're going to do two things. First, we're going to go over the homework for the previous lecture in which we reviewed a number of problems related to a path in a grid. And then homework was to print out the most profitable path. And then the second thing for today is we're going to look at another problem that will give you a better understanding on how to write the objective function. That is the plan, so let's jump into it and do the homework first. All right, so I've got the maximum profit in a grid problem with the only change that now we return array of arrays, which is the most profitable path, not just the amount, which was integer before. So how do we reconstruct the path? Well, one way is to use the template that we introduced in lecture number eight, right? So here is this template. We had this from array that we used to record where we came from, but now I would like to avoid doing that and I would actually like to use this DP array because it has all the information needed in order to reconstruct the path. So we can create this get path function, which is going to be a recursive function, and it will accept DP, the position where we're going to. So M minus one, N minus one is the last position where we were. Now we will accumulate the result in this internal variable, which is going to be empty first. So then get path dp integers ij integers and then we'll accumulate in path and return the result. So what's the base case? The base case is when we reach the very beginning i equals to zero and j equals to zero. In this case, we just want to append to the path and return. So we'll return append to the path the current ij. ij. Now when i equals to zero it means j is not zero so it means that we came from the left get path dpi j minus one and then path so we came from the left if j equals to zero meaning that i greater than zero then we came from the top so we say get path dpi minus one j and then path As otherwise i greater than zero and j greater than zero so we need to check which one is greater if dp of i minus one j greater than dp of i j minus one it means we came from the top so path equals get path dp i minus one j and then path otherwise we came from the left get path dp i j minus one path And then at the end, we just want to return and append current ij to the path ij. Now let's run the tests and see if things work. Everything is correct. So as you can see, we reconstructed the path without using the from array. All right, so let's solve one more problem. And the problem is that we've got a fence of size n, so we have n posts and two colors, green and blue. And you have to paint all the posts such that no more than two adjacent posts have the same color. And we have to return the total number of ways to paint the entire fence. And as you can see, I marked green color as one and Z, uh, blue color as zero. This is a little easy. This way, it's a little easier to kind of like work with this problem. So we have to model it somehow, right? So for for instance, when n equals to four. Um, the fence would look like uh, something like zero, zero, one, one, for instance, right? So it's blue, blue, green, green. And as I said, the constraint is that we cannot have more than two posts of the same color. So something like green, 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 uh, three greens is not allowed. Same for blue. We cannot have blue, blue, blue. Okay, so the first step in solving these problems is to define the objective function. And the objective function is usually in the problem description itself. So we can say f of i is the total number of ways the total number of ways to paint i posts i posts The second step is identify base cases. But in this problem, if we try to solve f of i for small values of i, like f of zero, f of one, f of two, and so on, it's going to be a little hard, a little 
kind of like tricky to recognize what the transition function is. And in this case, we have to think a little bit deeper about the problem. We have to brainstorm it and kind of like understand the problem description a little bit better. So let's do it. So we have two different use cases, right? We it's possible that the last uh, post has let's say one color and the previous is one the previous one is some other color or the last two posts are of the same color so it could be green green or uh, blue and blue and this fact is not specified in the objective function right if you look at the objective function it says f of i is the total number of ways to paint i posts but it doesn't say anything about the fact that we can have you know different use cases so that's something that is something that is important and in order to work with this problem in order to uh, identify the transition function we have to correctly specify the objective function so in this case we, we could say f of i j is the total number of ways to paint i posts ending ending with with a post painted in painted in j right and j can be as i said either green or blue either one or zero so now it's going to be a little easier to work with this problem right so when we define the transition function we can say f of i j f of i j equals so let's review it so this guy is i and then we need to color i minus one post right so we say f of i minus one with which color so we have two use cases in the first use case the previous one is of different color right so we had one now we need to color it with zero so the opposite of one is uh, zero so to get the opposite we could do something like one minus j and this would be if j is one then one minus one is zero if j is zero then one minus zero is one okay so we got another color and then we have a different use case so it can be either this or that right when we have two of the same color and when it comes to either or it's always the sum operation so plus f of i so this is this this one is i that guy is i minus one and we need to color i minus two right elements so i minus two and then what color so this one is j color that one is j and the i minus two one is of the opposite color so we have to say one minus j again and this is our transition function now what about the location of the answer where to look for the answer so in the previous uh, problems we've usually we, we always had f of n as the location of the answer in this problem we have n posts so f of n this is good but now what about the second parameter we have j here so again since we have uh, two different use cases when the last one is either blue or green it means we just have to take the sum of the two so we say f of n of zero plus f of n uh, one and this is going to be the answer to the entire problem so what i wanted to illustrate in this problem is that sometimes you have to kind of like add more parameters to your objective function and you have to kind of like think about you have to model your entire problem uh, you have to add more variables uh, because sometimes uh, just one variable is not enough one or two variables may not be enough in order to build your uh, recurrence relation or the transition function the way the the reason why I like to call it the transition function it, because you always have to model your state right so we model some state and then every time we go from one state to another so we transition uh, through those different states and that's why I like to call it 
a transition function uh, and that is basically the model of our problem. Okay, so now let's code it up real quick and then next week we'll talk about the difference between top-down and bottom-up approach to solving dynamic programming problems. All right, so I've got my editor. Here is the paint fence with two colors problem. So as usual, we are going to create a DP array of size n plus one, and it's an it's a two-dimensional array since it's a two-dimensional dynamic programming problem, n plus one, and then since this is go, I'm going to initialize uh, each row. So for i range DP DP of i, initialize the to an empty array of size two. The reason why it's two is because we have two colors, green and blue. So let's say green is one and blue is zero. Now let's uh, specify base cases. So when we have the fence of size one and the last one, the last post is blue, then there is only one way to color the fence. Now the same for green, there is only one way. Now, when we have two posts and the last post is blue, then there are two ways, right? Why? Because the first one is green, then blue. And the second way is the first one is blue and the second one is blue. Now, when we have two posts and the last one is green, there are two ways. First one is blue, green, and then green, green. Now let's apply the transition function for i equals three. We start from three because we already know the answer for dp of two for i to the n i plus plus. And then j starting from one, I'm sorry, starting from zero to one, including one, j plus plus. So we say dp of i j equals dp of i minus one 1 minus j plus dp of i minus 2, 1 minus j. And then we want to know what's the total number of ways to color the fence when posts end with blue color and when uh, the last post is green. Let's run the tests and see if the code is correct. And it is. So that's pretty much it for today's. I'll see you guys next Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a great day.